Hello and welcome to Dia's Fun Play. In today's video, let's see what is an acid rain, what causes acid rain and what are the ways to reduce acid rain. Acid rain is an acidic liquid that forms when rain gets mixed and reacts with certain pollutants in the air. Acid rain is a type of acid deposition which can appear in many different forms. The two most prevalent types of acid deposition are wet deposition and dry deposition. Rain, hail, snow and fog are few examples of wet deposition. Acidic dust particles and gases are few examples of dry deposition. Both wet and dry depositions can be carried by the wind for very long distances. Acid rain and acidic dust particles falls on buildings, cars, trees, crops and can also make water bodies like ponds, rivers and lakes acidic. Acid deposition in dry form can be inhaled by people and can cause health problems in some people. If you do not know what acidity is, let me explain acidity in a short way. Chemical compounds are described in two ways, namely acidic and alkaline. Acidity is measured using a pH scale. A pH scale has readings that runs from 0 to 14. 0 is the most acidic and 14 is the most basic or alkaline. A substance with a pH of 7 is neither basic nor acidic and is called neutral. In short, you can say pHs less than 7 are acidic and pHs greater than 7 are alkaline. Normal rain has a pH of about 5.6. Normal rain is slightly acidic because of the dissolved carbon dioxide. Acid rain usually has a pH range between 4.1 and 4.4. Decomposing vegetation and erupting volcanoes are some natural sources that release chemicals which can cause acid rain. But most acid rain is due to human activities like coal burning power plants, factories and automobiles. Acid rain is caused by a chemical reaction. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are released into the atmosphere when humans burn fossil fuels. These compounds react with water, oxygen and other chemicals to form airborne sulfuric and nitric acid. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can dissolve easily in water and can be carried very far by the wind. These dissolved acidic pollutants can even travel hundreds of kilometers in the air before they become part of the rain, hail, snow or fog that we experience on the earth's surface. When acid rain reaches earth, it flows across the surface in runoff water, enters water systems and gets absorbed into the soil and pollute them. Acid rain that gets absorbed into the soil can dissolve nutrients such as magnesium and calcium that trees need to be healthy. Acid rain also causes aluminium to be released into the soil which makes it hard for the trees to take up water. Trees located at higher elevations are at greater risk because they are exposed to acidic clouds and fog which contain greater amounts of acid than rain or snow. These acidic clouds and fog can strip off important nutrients from their leaves and needles and make it easier for infections and insects to damage trees and forests. Acid rain also pollutes water bodies like lakes, rivers, ponds and streams. Without water pollution or acid rain, most ponds, lakes and streams would have a pH level of around 6.5. But acid rain has caused many lakes and streams to have much lower pH levels. This increase in acidity levels can be deadly to aquatic wildlife including phytoplankton, mayflies, rainbow trout, frogs, spotted salamanders and other creatures that are part of the food web. Tiny airborne particles of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can cause respiratory diseases or can make existing diseases worse. Respiratory diseases like asthma or chronic bronchitis can make it hard for people to breathe, especially in children and senior citizens. Nitrogen oxides can cause ground level ozone. This ground level ozone can cause respiratory problems like pneumonia and bronchitis and can even cause permanent lung damage. The health effects that people have to worry about are not exactly caused by the acid rain but are caused when people breathe in these tiny airborne particles or ozone that causes acid rain. Now let's see how we can minimize acid rain and air pollution. Because energy production releases large amounts of pollutants that causes air pollution and acid rain, one important step we can take is to conserve energy. We can do this in a number of ways. 
turn off lights mobile chargers computers televisions air conditioners heaters video games and other electrical equipments when you're not using them buy electrical appliances that uses less electricity including light bulbs air conditioners heaters refrigerators dishwashers and washing machines such equipments might have the energy star label on them driving cars trucks and two wheelers also produces large amounts of nitrogen oxides which cause acid rain to help cut down on air pollution from cars you can carpool or take public transportation as much as you can also walk or ride a bicycle to a nearby store or friend's house instead of driving the first and foremost important step you can take to help control acid rain is to understand what acid rain is the problems and its solutions spread a word about acid rain and air pollution to your friends classmates relatives parents and teachers about what you learned on this episode and try to educate them about the problems of acid rain Yeah.